Jeff, I grew up in my father's paint product business. He sold mm -hmm. paints, wall coverings, carpetings. So in my earliest years, I mixed paint, delivered paint, applied paint, did everything to do with paint, dealt with people. Spilt, so I know a lot about paint. paint the old way, and I know this. I don't want to paint any more than I have to. <laughs> when it comes to painting my hives, I'm Mr. Efficient, get it done, no nonsense, get it over with. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you're saying paint, but so there's so many other there options are. too, other than specific paint. Paint's a generic term and paint's yep, a product yep. term. So there's a lot of options for beekeepers today. I'd like to talk to you about this for a few minutes to see what you do, tell you what I do, and then we'll hopefully hear from some of our listeners and find out what they do. Well, let's let's do it. Let's cover this world. <laughs> oh, God, that hurts. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Jim Too, And I'm Jeff Ott from Beekeeping Today. And I want to talk to you, along with Jeff, about the drudgery of painting your bee equipment or not. You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, hosts Kim Flottam and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world. Get ready for an engaging discussion to delight and inform all beekeepers. If you're a long timer or just starting out, Sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. Jeff, when I go in those big box stores that sell home supplies, mm -hmm. it's the smell of my youth. Really? I used to deliver paint to new housing subdivisions in the 40s and 50s when everybody would build not a house, but they'd build 20 houses at one time. Yeah. My dad's company would get the contract, and my job is to deliver paint, deliver paint, and you go into all that new construction work with the smell of lumber and plaster and sawdust. Oh, yeah. And in those days, then I'll stop reminiscing, you actually could hear hand saws, and you could hear <laughs> men, there were no women, driving nails. And now all you hear is the sound of electric hand power saws and air nailers going on. So those are antique yeah. sounds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I would deliver paint. And in those days, it was oil-based paint. It was serious yep. stuff. I mean, you could, you did not just go wash your hands and get that stuff off. And if you got it on your clothes, you just wore it with paint on your clothes. How much and how delightfully those products have changed. Tell me what you use to paint your equipment right now. I am using two different products. Uh, I use on my white hives, because I go different colors. On my white hives, I am using a latex base paint. And my most of my hives are painted or uh, protected with a stain, a, a colored stain. Why did you choose stain? Long ago, <laughs> galaxy far, far away, I had um, my good friend owned a, uh, a chain of paint stores in northern Ohio. And my buddy told me to use a stain because it got into the grain of wood and protected the wood better than a paint would, which just coats it and protects it from the outside. You could argue either way. Sure, yeah. it does absorb into the wood, but it's mm -hmm. a very thin finish and, and there's no UV inhibiting materials. So it's going to wash and wear mm -hmm. quickly compared to a film-based coating like those old oil finishes that would peel in sheets when they begin to have a product failure underneath. So, yeah, I, I use both, too, though. I, I use stain and I use latex paint. Yeah. But I know that if I use stain, I'm going to have to go back and recoat more often. And mm. each time I recoat with stain, those dark spots caused by mold and mildew along the joints and wherever, it's still going to be dark spots. So right. you'll only get your most beautiful finish <laughs> when that equipment is freshly painted or stained and new. So my advice to you and me both is make a lot of photographs because <laughs> as the years pass, no matter what you're painting with, it's going to get more and more beaten, even if you put on a film coat like a latex paint. 
Well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, though. Yeah, but I know. appreciate you saying that because I think my hives are beautiful. And others would think, <laughs> oh, my stars, he has one junk beekeeper. That is true. <laughs> Here's the bottom line. You're going to get seven years. Yep. I mean, the average bee box is going to last about seven years. Now, when, when I say that, I suppose people are thinking about a complete collapse and rotting away. No, I mean that the joint up top where you use your hive tool to separate, that, that edge is going to begin to fail. Maybe along the bottom, there'll be some rot turning up. And at that point, those who have high standards will phase it out or cut the box down and use it yeah. then as a shallower super or put a bottom on it and make a plant feeder out of it or something, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's not going to last it forever anyway. Well, let me ask you. The, so one of the, I mean, there's so many questions on this because everybody wants their woodenware. That's one of your bigger investments. And it is it does have to be replaced. And so everybody wants to try to extend the life of their equipment that sits out there in, in all weather and is pried on and, and pushed around and slammed around. And um, and that's just in the bee yard. We're not even talking about in the shed or anything. Right. Yep. So do you do anything special for your wooden wear when you're building it to help protect the finish ultimately? I mean, I know some beekeepers who like to apply some sort of wood preservative, uh, eco-friendly, uh, environmentally friendly a surface protectant to the wood before they nail it together to help protect it. I don't do that now. Mm -hmm. When you said eco-friendly, I'm afraid that some of the things I used to do were anything but eco-friendly. <laughs> there was a product called Penetrol. I'm familiar with and, it. And if it's still made, and I'm offending the Penetrol manufacturers, I am so sorry. I, I like the product. I didn't do anything with it that I that I think would have broken the code, but I don't use Penetrol anymore. I, you know, it was just one more thing to do. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're you're talking about Penetrol. I was told to mix Penetrol in with my yep. my latex paint. Yep. And that's right. what I did. Mix it in with anything. It was just a real thin oil. Yeah. And it was supposed to help. So, you know, when the bottom line comes around, you get to choose what you want to use. Now, I was surprised. Can I, I'm going to use a product name, Sherwin-Williams. Mm -hmm. I went over to Sherwin-Williams branch here in, in Worcester, Ohio. And I went in, you know, like a 70-year-old guy and told them that I wanted a gallon of enamel. And they told me that by Ohio regulation, they could not sell me a gallon of enamel paint that I could only get that at farm and big box stores if I could even get it there, that Ohio was discouraging the homeowner use mm. of petroleum-based enamel paints. And the most they could sell me was a quart. And they didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they promptly showed me the latex versions, the modern-day latex versions, that are supposed to be just as resilient as the old oil finishes. So I'm hammering on this. Why? Because most of us, as you said earlier, want to protect that wooden investment that we have. And that, uh, that equipment comes in, it's beautiful. You can get it from all kinds of places. In fact, why don't we stop and hear from someone who'd be happy to provide us with such equipment? We're thinking spring here at Better Be. Do you have all the hive bodies and frames you need to super up your hives or expand your apiary? If not, we have you covered with high-quality woodenware made by our sister company, Humble Abodes. Humble uses eastern white pine from the backwoods of Maine to manufacture box joints that are guaranteed to fit together tightly and frame parts that are easily assembled. Give us a call to learn more about any of our products or to ask a beekeeping question. We've got you covered. Shop for wooden boxes and frames at betterbee.com slash wood. The big thing, Jeff, about any kind of protective coating, and this isn't so much a, a paint issue as a wood issue, mm -hmm. was the oddity that we have that we put living animals inside this box and we don't want to paint the inside of the box. We want it wholesome and clean and natural by our standards. Mm -hmm. I understand that. 
But by putting that moisture-producing animal, our cluster, inside that box, they generate moisture. And that moisture then percolates through the wood, and the outer finish fails, not from the outside, but from that water percolating through the wood from the inside. Mm -hmm. Beekeepers were always told, and at the time, I agreed, don't paint the insides of your boxes. And most yeah. beekeepers didn't, and I still don't. But I would paint them if I had to. I, I would paint the inside, and from a paint perspective, that's going to give the most protection to that bee box. I can see people rolling their eyes right now, <laughs> furrowed brows. Say. Well, you know, anything you put inside the beehive, you're going to get in your honey. And no doubt you are. But once that latex finish has cured, not just dried, Drying and curing are two different things. Once it's cured, it is essentially inert. So if anybody rushes out and paints the inside of their equipment because Jim Tew said so, and that's the only place you got your information, that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> but from a wood standpoint, protecting it, it should be painted inside. From a beekeeper wholesomeness standpoint, you probably want to say, well, maybe it'll rot a year earlier, but so what? I'll have a better mm -hmm. product because of it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Argue with me. Shoot holes in that or back it down. Well, I will tell you, I've never painted the inside of, the, of, a, of a box. Never. And, and, and just because I grew up in the time when you don't, you don't paint the inside of the, the box. I've never even considered it. I will consider it. Next time, but I probably still won't because there's so many different philosophies now. And the other is to providing a very rough interior surface for the bees to uh, deposit propolis. Yes, on both so, counts. Yes, on yes. both counts. So if you, you go and paint it, are they more inclined or less inclined to, to deposit propolis? So, you know, you, you take that or, or if you leave a rough, if you rough it up uh, and then paint it, are they still? So that's an interesting, um, interesting proposition. I don't have an answer for. I probably still will not paint the inside of the box just because old habits. I wouldn't paint the inside of the box for a totally different reason. Not, Why is that? It's not old habits. It's because I'm an old man. <laughs> and painting the outside of the boxes is enough. And then figuring out how to paint the top and bottom edge is just so annoying because you get paint <laughs> strips everywhere while you're trying to paint those edges. And now let's paint the inside also. No, I'm not painting the inside. But it's for lazy reasons, not because I'm really concerned about it. And truthfully, if the bees... Stay in that box long enough, they will, in their own way, apply a protective finish mm -hmm. over the inside of the equipment that probably is just as good, better, than that latex paint film that I would have put on. But it takes them a year or two to really bring in enough propolis, to walk over it with wax, dirty feet, whatever they're doing to, to get that propolis slash wax coating inside. This really does raise the other question about, and we've talked about stains and paints and latex paints versus enamel paints and all this real briefly, but there is a school of thought of coating or protecting the woodenware with dipping it in wax. Yes. I've never, I've never experimented with that. Have you? I have not. But I was very close to someone who did. In my lab years ago, I had a technician who really took this seriously. And mm -hmm. he bought rosin from pines, from coniferous trees from Mexico. He bought blocks of rosin. Huh. And he melted that in a petroleum base and then added beeswax to it. And then he dipped our new equipment in that scathing solution. I would never recommend this. <laughs> I mean, it was double, double toil and trouble kind of thing around that cauldron with that fire going and that boiling rosin. But it got this odd finish that permeated everything, especially those box joints. You know, you just can't get paint in those box joints. But yeah. you drop that stuff in boiling rosin wax mix 
and it was absorbed into everything. So we had this modeled look equipment that sat there forever, being ugly, but mm-hmm. being weather resistant. I would never do that because of the effort that it took to do it. And this is definitely not something you would want to do with your spouse's crock pot. No, it is not. You, <laughs> <laughs> It's no, a single-use no, appliance. No. <laughs> I'm inclined to try. I'm that kind of person, but <laughs> why would you say that? I got a crock pot right now that I've dedicated to wax, and whenever I dip queen cups, I fire off that old crock pot and then wait for it to melt. There is one <laughs> other thing, one other option that we have not discussed. Oh, all right. And here it is. Just don't okay. do anything. Put your equipment together oh. and put bees in it and wish it well. And over time, just like cedar, it goes from pine wood mm-hmm. to this ashen gray, silver yep. colored stuff. I don't have any data, but I I bet you it still lasts five to six years Perhaps if you if you wanted this stuff to go twenty years, you got to paint it and keep it out of the weather as much as you can. If you're prepared to buy new equipment every seven to ten years, just put it on. If looks count to you, then this is going to be definitely be downgraded. This is not going to have the neat, wholesome white look no. that beekeepers like so much. But there's nothing wrong with not painting it at all. It's just that's more true. correct, writer, if that's a word, <laughs> yeah, to good. put some kind of protective finish on it. Yeah, I, 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 the bees don't care. I mean, ultimately, whether what you're doing, uh, I, I, I think this is a different topic, but I think having different designs on the front of the hives help bees yes. orient to to your colony or to the box. But the color. I mean, I'm sure you can determine, well, the bees don't see red, so don't paint your colony red. They'll just fly right by it. Or you want to do it, you know, they they see more on the purple end, so paint them purplish if you want to do purple. The color issue is a good thing, though. I mean, that's that's an interesting topic. What color do you paint it? Number one, paint it whatever color Mm -hmm. you want. Right. That you like. Number two, paint it bright primary colors because we like to think as beekeepers that... That helps the bees orient and find their proper hive. Well, that means you can't move supers about, and you can't reverse deeps. So I never really put a lot of credence in that. But I like the brightly colored yard. I like the decals on the front. I don't do Mm -hmm. it, but I admire people who can do it. So the color thing, yes, bees definitely see color. And they don't see red, apparently, as we do. They see it as something. They don't see it as invisible. So if... It, it may not look red to bees, but it has a color they can identify. So yeah. when it comes down to color, paint it whatever color you want. I wouldn't recommend black, especially in the, in the southern states and the western states because of the heat. You're asking about colors. I, I like to, I've always, I shouldn't say oh, always, my primary color for hives is, is a, a brown, darker color. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, just because I think we have longer, cooler days than we did in Ohio or in Colorado. Yep. So I kind of keep it a the the stained brown color. Plus, it help, hides it from the the roadside, and I don't like seeing having my hives seen from the road. But that's a personal preference. Well, you were taking the words from my mouth as I waited for you to politely stop so I could jump in <laughs> and say, sometimes you don't want to paint those things white because out of sight, out of mind. If so right. you've lived in an area where hives have been stolen or vandalized, then don't paint them nice, bright, clear colors. Paint them earth tone colors and see if they'll blend in better and not be so readily uh, attractive to ne'er-do-well people. I agree. And then I do I do put symbols or I, simple symbols, blocks, squares, circles, something. I paint them, stencil them on the front of the hive um, near the hive entrance. Yep. I know that's kind of goofiness, but I, I think that helps with it's the not, I drifting. Don't think it's and, goofy. I, I still brand mine. I've got a brand that I bought years ago, and I mark my colonies just like it's going to prevent anybody. It's just busy work. I mean, if someone's going to steal it, they'll steal it and yeah. take a grinder and grind my name off, and that's the end of that. But at least, you know, I'm making these things unstealable, 
because I branded my name on them. This is my hive. This is my mark. <laughs> I've got to ask you, did you find that branding iron on a roadside or in a pile of trash somewhere in the Medina, Ohio area, <laughs> I don't know, about 30 years ago in a pile of other beekeeping equipment that I'm... I, I don't want to go down that road too far, but, you know, I, I know I had one at one time, but it got uh, disposed of rather no, quickly. No, I didn't. I think. No, no, no. I, I paid hard cash for mine. <laughs> and, you know, and now we're really off the subject on branding, but you get one shot. I mean, if you <laughs> if you touch that branding iron to that box and you say, oh, that's not level. Well, you can't change your mind. You're going to spend the next 15 years with the brand box that your name wasn't level on. That's enough about that, though. I will add this. Brand it new. Don't try to brand on top of the paint. It, it never works as well if you've painted two coats of anything and then try to brand it after the fact. Brand it first and then paint it. Now, my last comment on this whole topic is that many of the manufacturers, including the sponsor of the podcast, provide pre-painted boxes as yep. well and that saves that especially in honey supers saves a lot of time when you need it quickly yep you know one thing we have not mentioned at all and it's too late to get excited about it is you can get a lot of equipment now that's not made of wood it's different plastic composites and especially if it's expanded types of polystyrene that really needs to be painted and probably should be painted inside so the bees won't gnaw it and chew it so badly mm -hmm. and maybe resist not just wax moths, but carpenter ants that just go crazy for some mm -hmm. of my insulated equipment. So that's a painting issue for completely different reasons. It's not wood. Anyway, this is what I think we've said. Paint with stain. There's all kinds of stains, UV inhibiting stains. Be prepared to paint more often or to apply the stain more often. Use latex. I use deck paint, uh, deck stain because it's yep. tougher. Anyways, go ahead. And use uh, use latex because you probably can't get oil paint. And I'm not sure you want to use that anyway. No. Don't do anything or do it one time and never do it again. Use any color you want, probably other than black. You have a lot of leeway here, don't you, Jeff? Yep, you do. Now, we've talked 20 minutes, and I'm not going to make a recommendation as we wind down here. Well, we stated our preferences. Uh, so. stated my preference. Yep. I enjoyed talking about it. Thanks for letting me walk down memory lane and go back and look at equipment that needs painting, but will never get it. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me along today. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.